is a great opportunity for me. You know, uh, this is a legendary uh, venue. I have fought already three times over here. I have had a loss and a draw, and Saturday I'm coming for the win. Cardi, I want to ask him about uh, Perez in his camp and what those uh, sparring sessions and having the former champ in camp meant to him in preparation for this weekend. ¿Qué significa tener para ti a Perez en entrenamiento contigo y preparándote para esta pelea? Pues fue una muy buena experiencia. Este, hicimos, realizamos un buen trabajo en la preparación. Este, sé de antemano que no es una pelea fácil, pero tengo la confianza y la tercera, la certeza de, de salir con la mano en alto. Sé que no va a ser fácil, pero sin duda alguna vengo por la victoria. That was a great experience and prepared me very well for this this big opportunity. And I have the certainty that uh, I know it's not going to be uh, an easy fight. It's going to be a tough fight, but I'm coming for the win. Keyshawn, you mentioned he is a tough vet. Does he uh, does he present any challenges that you possibly haven't seen before? Oh, definitely. Um, on paper and pros, as a pro fighter, he's definitely the tough, the toughest opponent I fought. And um, he's definitely going to bring new challenges to the ring that most likely I've never seen before. He's a vet. You know, he done fought Mikey Garcia and a lot more other champions. And um, I'm just, I'm just you know, happy he took this fight. And I'm excited to see how this fight is going to turn out. I asked him about his camp. You uh, you had a camp in Colorado. What was that like? Shoot, training Terrence Crawford, man. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Terrence is, is an animal in training camp. Waking up at 7 a.m. and just training and then sparring him that same day. You know, camp was tough. And for a tough opponent like this, you know, it was definitely needed. And um, it definitely prepared me for, for Saturday night. And, and like I say, it's going to be a spectacular performance. And I, and I should get that stoppage. Thanks for being here, Juan, as well. Gracias. Uh, moving in one seat, we have Xander Zayas and Alexis Salazar. Xander, I'm going to start with you, brother. Third fight this year. How excited are you to be back at the Garden? Man, um, first off, I want to wish um, Bob and happy birthday. Um, thanks, Top Rank and ESPN, for the opportunity. I'm excited. I'm excited. Back in New York, um, had the opportunity to fight here in March. Then I had to cancel the fight in June. So being back here now as the NABO champion means a lot more. We're excited. Alexis, coming over to you. Your last fight was a tough fight. What did you take away from that that prepares you for a, a, a tougher battle here in New York? Yeah, well, honestly, I feel real good. You know, uh, made a mistake, paid for it, you know. Uh, this fight, uh, I'm prepared, you know. Uh, I did a good camp. So I'm feeling really good. Weight's good. Everything's good. And uh, I don't expect, like, I expect a good fight. You know, he's a good fighter. And thank you for the opportunity. And thank Top Rank. Thank you, everybody. And I, I feel good. I feel real good. And, like, I, I learned, like I said, I learned, a, I learned a really good experience with a really good fighter, you know. And, like, I feel good. I'm going to ask you the same question. I'll probably ask everybody on the stage this question. How exciting is it? To be when we look at these these uh, banners in front of us, Madison Square Garden, world's most I don't famous arena. Shit. It's a fucking dream come true. <laughs> there, there you go. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck am I doing here? But shit, I'm proud of myself. Yeah. Thank you. What? So uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, honesty. That's what we love up here. Well, that was my Oprah moment. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull that one out of the footage and save it for my reel. Uh, <laughs> what can you do Saturday night to shock the boxing world? I feel good, you know. Uh, I respect my, my opponent. He's a good fighter. Shit. I'm like everybody else, you know. Came here to win, and I'm ready for the fucking win, you know. It's upset season, baby. <laughs> Somebody liked it. Xander, I'm coming back over here. Um, your last fight is spot us, TKO in the fifth. Did you take anything away from that fight that, uh, that stands out that you learned specifically from that, that battle? Oh, yes, definitely. Um... The tougher they are, the easier it is to beat them. And um, Saturday night, I'm looking forward to do the same thing. Again, I got a great fighter, a great veteran fighter in front of me um, with a great, great um, coaching staff. So I have to keep, you know, the game plan going, have fun in there, and keep listening to my corner. Everything else um, will come into place. You mentioned the toughness uh, of this fighter. Were you able to watch tape, and is there anything that he presents that you have to keep an eye out for that you haven't seen before? Um, you know, I feel like every fight is, uh, is something new. It's a new experience. Um, but we'll have to, to wait it to Saturday and see.
Um, I do. I did watch a couple videos. I don't want to give too much of the game plan, but um, we we are ready for Saturday night. Before we move on to our next uh, our next set of fighters, uh, Xander, I want to give you the opportunity to speak about Fundación Rimas, which is uh, a charity near and dear to your heart that's raising money for hurricane relief in Puerto Rico. So please take a second to talk about what what your plan is here with this fight Saturday. Yeah. Um, behind me, we have the QR code um, for for my uniform that I'll be I'll be using this. This Saturday night, um, we'll be auctioning the uniform and um, Fundación Rimas. Whatever they get from that from the auction will will be donated to Puerto Rico and other families affected by the hurricanes. So, um, if you guys can scan the code and help in any way possible, it will, it will mean the world to me. So, thank you guys. Everybody in this room right now who's uh, got a camera pointed over here, please take a picture of that and uh, post it to your socials and everybody tuning in, uh, please do your part, scan that QR code and, and make a contribution if you can. Uh, Alexis Zander, thank you so much for being here. All right, moving in one more. Uh, the heavyweights, Jared Anderson, Jerry Forrest. Jared, are you taking, are you guys, what are you making, donations? You want me to, you want me to on, hold man. for station identification here while you guys make a contribution? <laughs> uh, Jared, first time uh, that this bout is scheduled for 10 rounds. First time for you that we see your name with a 10-rounder associated with it. Uh, I would imagine you don't anticipate it going 10, but how was camp knowing that this is now a 10-rounder? Um, it was a great camp. You know, we come always prepared to go to distance uh, at every fight, you know, but uh, we did do what we needed to do. You know, we had a great training camp. Um, we prepared well. Um, great conditioning. You know, shout out to my conditioning coach, uh, Teray Stevenson, um, and shout out to my, my coaches. You know, we did a great job, um, and we came in shape. Yeah. Jerry? Are you being overlooked in this fight? Do you feel like you're being overlooked? Not at all. Um, <clears throat> he's a good fighter, and his camp is smart, you know, so I, I don't think anyone ever overlooks me to be I mean, if you've seen me fight before, there's no way you're going to overlook me, so. 100%. I, I my, my next note is here, you went the distance with Pulev your last time out. What did you learn from that fight? Because that was a battle, uh, and I'm sure he watched that tape. What did you learn from that fight? Um... Just, I learned a lot about myself with that fight. Uh, that was my first fight with an injury. So, um, just learning how to deal with an injury inside the ring. Uh, learning how to just, just make it work for you, you know. Um, I took a lot out of that. I had to make sure I went back to camp and just fully healed first. Make sure my body was, you know, fully settled and, and fully ready to go again. Now I'm back, you know. If you've seen me work before, you know what I do. Yeah, Saturday's going to be uh, unreal. Uh, Jared, I want to come back to you. Last time we had one of these conversations, uh, there was a big Serbian uh, standing on the other side of you in the ring. And I think I asked you, I said, hey, was that, is this your toughest opponent to date? Here we are again. I'm going to ask you, is this your toughest opponent to date? Because I, I didn't think that fight would go the way it did. And you surprised a lot of people and put them out quick. You got, you're looking at me like I'm going to swing at me. But is this your toughest opponent to date? Uh, without a doubt. You know, um, his, his record speaks for itself. You know, his yeah. resume speaks for itself. Been in there with some of the best. Um, going a distance with some of the best, you know, so uh, definitely, without a doubt. You talked about conditioning because that's uh, that's come up a lot now with every heavyweight fight that we see. Uh, when we see a 10-rounder planned, it doesn't really happen that you go very, very far into that. You don't go very deep into rounds, but are you ready to go the distance if, if called upon? Of course, always. You know, we come ready to um, go the distance. We 12-round uh, we, we fight ready, so... Um, like I said, you know, we train for it in and out of the ring every day. Jerry, studying his tapes, is there anything that you got to look out for? Or is it just your game plan, impose your will, and go after it? I never deviate. I mean, if you ever seen any of my interviews, my, it's just the same every time. I'm out boxing, I work. I just, it's just what I do. Um, I don't have a game plan for anyone. I know what I possess. So my team looks at the camp. My team looks at what they do. I mean, in every fight that I fought, you, you see me work. So... I mean, like I said, I, I only focus and worry about me personally. You know, I don't, I don't do the whole opponent thing. Walking into the ring, Madison Square Garden, does it get any better than that? I can tell you now. I, I, <laughs> the walls where I train at, you got the fucking Ali posters with MSG. I mean, it's, it's legendary. You know what I mean? So um, I, it's, it's, for me, it's more of a respect deal. You know, this is a sacred place where people have been fighting here for, for years, for centuries. So it, it's for me... It's an honor, and uh, it's just a respectable thing for to, to see a guy like you know Bob Arum come back. Uh, to to know that 
this is the most famous arena in the world, and I get to share that stage with a lot of good fighters. So it's really a blessing to me, honestly, to, to be able to share the stage with Jared, to be able to share the stage with my bro, you know what I'm saying? Like, we all from the same city, we all from the same place, and so it's just, it's, I'm, I'm just honored to be here. When times get tough in the ring and you're sitting in your corner and, uh, you know, you got to get back up, how does this building, how does this motivate you to leave it all in the ring, so to speak? Uh, after about three to four rounds, the crowd is usually always swaying to my side. So uh, the crowd definitely motivates me. Um, you know, any, anyone here can feel the love and they can feel the tension. So uh, as you're working, you can feel the crowd, you know, engaging more and more. Jared, one last one for you, and it's, it's kind of in, in line with what I just asked. Does the garden give you that extra boost, or do you just roll in mission impossible, mission the same every time? Um, it's kind of a mission the same every time I go in, um, but it is an extra uh, special day, you know, to fight in the garden. It's, it's amazing with all the history, you know, um, and the bright lights, the crowd. Uh, definitely last time I, I was out here, you know, the crowd was amazing. You know, they supported me a lot. I mean, I think I gained a lot of fans out here. Listen, thank you guys so much. Looking forward to Saturday night. And we turn to our main event. Tiafima Lopez, Sandor Martin, thank you for joining us. Uh, Tio, I want to start with you. Um, a title shot awaits the winner. Is it tough to look past this one, or is it, uh, is it mission at hand? Here we go. First off, you know, just got to thank God for everything, all the blessings, and just bringing us here and having the opportunity to show our talents and our gifts to the world. Uh, this definitely is Madison Square Garden, the most of the Mecca of Meccas. You know, so this we all have an opportunity here. We have an objective to to do on Saturday night. And no, you know, my whole thing really is just how do we continue to pursue on the takeover, takeover? You know, we just got to keep winning. Whoever they put in front of us, we beat them. Guardy, I'm going to ask you to jump in here as well. Uh, Sander took this fight on a three weeks' notice after Pedraza backed out. Are you ready to go? Eh, tomaste esta pelea con tres semanas de anticipación. Eh, luego de lo que sucedió con Pedraza, ¿estás listo para pelear? Estoy absolutamente listo para la pelea, por eso he venido. Eh, son tres semanas de aviso de preparación específica, pero yo venía entrenando en el gimnasio porque soy deportista 24-7 todos los días del año. Quiero agradecer a Bob Barum, a Top Rank, la oportunidad que me dan de estar boxeando en el Madison ante un gran adversario como este Ofimo López y espero que podamos dar un gran combate el sábado a los aficionados. I'm absolutely ready to fight. You know, I'm an athlete 24-7. Uh, I got the three weeks notice for the fight, but I was already in camp, you know, training. Uh, and I'm just ready to fight. I want to thank Top Rank and Bob Adam for the opportunity, and we're going to give a big fight to the fans on Saturday. Yeah, we hear that a lot. Uh, I've always, you know, you're always in the gym, ready to go. What does this opportunity mean to you, headlining the Garden Saturday night, Heisman night in New York City? A lot of eyes on this fight. What does this opportunity mean to you? ¿Qué significa esta oportunidad para ti? Una noche grande en el Madison Square Garden, eh, en la noche Heisman, una gran oportunidad para ti. ¿Qué significa? Para mí es eh, lo más grande que me ha pasado en mi carrera deportiva y prácticamente también en mi país. Es muy difícil eh, ser boxador saliendo desde España. Son 11 años de carrera profesional, 42 combates profesionales para tener una oportunidad como esta. En el momento que he tenido la, pro la oportunidad, evidentemente no lo podía rechazar. Teófimo López, el Madison, Top Rank, hacer historia. Se trata de eso, de hacer historia. This is the biggest opportunity in my career. You know, coming from Spain, it's very tough to be a boxer. 11-year uh, career, uh, 42 fights, and this is the bigger opportunity that I have gotten. So it was three weeks notice, but I had to take the opportunity. We are about making history, so that's why I'm here. I love it. Tio, I want to come over to you. In the ever-changing world of boxing, will we see anything new from you Saturday night? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, that's what I'm all about. You know, I think that we all have a, a canvas to perform <clears throat> at. You know, I'm an artist myself, so I'm over here just trying to be abstract <laughs> as much as possible when I when it comes to the ring. You know, it's all about just giving the fans what they really want, and that's entertainment. And that goes for everybody here sitting right now. We are in the entertainment business, not boxing business, and you guys got to remember that. So by all means, go go after everything that you can do. You know, I follow the likes of Prince Nassim, and those are the things that you guys will see. It doesn't mean I got a showboat like crazy, you know. However, it's just all about just giving what they really want. It's just not about getting the job done in the win. It's what you do before and what you do in there and then afterwards. Um, and that's why we are headlining Madison Square Garden under a great card, great card. I mean, the talent that we have here, this is amazing for me. You know, this is the opportunity of a lifetime for anyone here. 
Every time I come out here to the garden, this is my eighth time fighting at Madison Square Garden, fourth time in the big room. And um, all I can say, man, is just I'm very, very grateful, man, very grateful. Last year, nearly lost my life, and now I just get to redo it in a better way. Three weeks ago when uh, Pedraza pulled out of the fight, what was that like for you guys in camp? Did you have to reevaluate, change directions a little bit with a new opponent, or was it just business as usual? Preparation is key. you got to be prepared for everything and anything. You know, sometimes people are going to want to – set a detour for you and you just got to be prepared for that as well you know you got to know that you got to know your routes and your your roots so really um no we're always prepared look Pedraza actually was probably I'm not overlooking Sander Martin however you got to look at it you know Pedraza even though he came off a draw he's someone that's able to switch from Sao Paulo to Orthodox you know so we already had that in camp we had Sao Paulo's we had Orthodox in the gym so we already were ready for anything and, and everything that they had to come no surprises over here, then? The only surprise I think everybody's really going to see is just, like, how better did I get from my first my first career loss, my failure. You know, I think that really what I, I would like to tell everybody here is that um, you never really lose. The only time you ever, ever, ever really lose is when you quit, when you say no mas. That's when you really, that's when you lose. Other than that, man, you, you have to understand that these failures are meant to make us stronger and grow. Why we have the greats and the legends like Jordan, Kobe, man, God bless his soul, you know, and Tiger Woods and LeBron James and all these other great athletes around the board, even Serena Williams, you know, everyone. And Tiana, don't leave And up. Tiana, of course, you know, um, and it's all those things that you really have to take in. A lot of people are so scared now, but this is a new time. This is a new era. You know, uh, we all emulate Floyd in some way. He's taught a great, great, great uh, way of how you can move. However, it only worked for him. We all have a different art. We all have a different way. And I think that it's you all got to know your audience. Know your audience who you want to attract. Know who you're trying to shoot for. And uh, I guarantee you, you know, you'll be the first signed of anything like that. Look, I'm the first boxer to be signed to Bud Light because of it. You know, it's just a lot of work, though. You got to – the facts are there. You know, I'm not trying to brag it. It's just to help the, the new generation. And like I say, you know, when you're in here and you're doing what you got to do, no matter what it is, our job literally is, this ain't a job for us. We know what we're going to do Saturday night. We have fun. You know, that's, that's the light work. That's easy. The, the hard part is the cameras. You got to promote your fight. You got to go out there. Even if it's I Love Boxing Podcast and they have five subscribers or ten, you go and take it. And don't charge them because they're helping you promote your fight and your, your name. You know, I don't charge nobody when I go on these interviews at all because we're all helping each other. Do you bring beer? It's yeah, I bring it. beer. I do, a, I, I do a shotgun and whatever you like, you know? <laughs> uh, Bud Light, I'm available too, you know. You can call me anytime. Guardy, I want to go back. Free Bud Light for everybody. <laughs> you just lost your sponsorship, I said. <laughs> uh, I want one more over here for Sander. Uh, we talk about the opportunity in the big room here at the Garden, but as I started with Tio, this is, there's a title shot waiting after this fight for the uh, the victor what does that mean to him to have possibly that opportunity dangled as a carrot in front of him esta una gran oportunidad por la exposición que tiene en el garden pero también porque el ganador podría estar peleando por una oportunidad de título mundial qué significa esa oportunidad de título mundial para ti al final eh, yo vengo para eso vengo para para ganar respeto mucho a Teofimo López la carrera que ha tenido él como deportista profesional lo respeto mucho como boxeador Solo deseo que demos un gran combate y bajemos con salud del ring el, el próximo sábado en el, en el Madison. Para mí es un momento muy especial, pero no miro más allá de este combate. Al final, creo que él y yo vivimos en dos mundos diferentes. Él vive en el mundo del espectáculo y yo vivo en el mundo del boxeo. Cuando él estaba grabando entrevistas, cuando él estaba viendo a los Knicks, cuando él estaba de compras, yo estaba entrenando. Esa es la diferencia que va a haber el sábado. At the end of the day, you know, uh, we're just here to win. Uh, of course, this is a big opportunity and I'm going to take it, uh, but I'm not looking past that. I respect Teofimo Lopez, what he has done in his career, uh, but we live in two different worlds. He lives in the entertainment world and I live in the boxing world. Uh, while he was doing interviews and was watching the Knicks and everything, I was training. So for me, this is the boxing world and I'm here to win. Fantastic. You want to say something, Teo? I saw the mic come up. I always have something to say. <laughs> uh, for me, no, that's good. That means he's watching me, watching me close. That's good. That's where I need him right now. Perfect.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, again, a huge night of fights at the Mecca of Boxing. Tomorrow we'll be right here as we weigh them all in. But again, we want to wish Bob Arum a happy birthday. We want to congratulate Brad Goodman, Timothy Bradley Jr., and Brad Jacobs on being inducted into the Hall of Fame class of 2023. And a big round of applause to these fine gentlemen for spending time with us this afternoon. As always, this is Boxing, this is Top Rank, and we'll see you tomorrow as they step on the scale. Have a great day, everybody.